Come on in, Irene, and I'll make you some coffee. Good. Yeah. How did the guitar I mask go? Oh, it was lovely. <laughs> hey, Gloria, I hear you dished up quite a surprise tonight for dinner. A horse meat a la Frank Lorenzo. Don't let she hear you say that. Oh, that, that's all right, Ma. He's out. Now he's in. <laughs> hello, Archie. Don't give me none of that hello, Archie, and the smiles all over your face. I know where you've been tonight. You've been over to St. Mary's. Oh, yeah, and it was a beautiful service. I came out of the church feeling like a new woman. Holy cow, you mean you've done it already? <laughs> Look at you, you wouldn't even know what you've done if you've done it. Did you get down on your knees and kiss anybody's ring tonight? <laughs> Did any guy take a stick and splash water all over you? <laughs> Did you eat a cookie? <laughs> Listen, Irene, this is all your fault. Oh, I didn't have the ice cream in church, George. Gee, Irene and me stopped on the way home. That's all? Yeah. You didn't do nothing besides that? No. Well, then, thank God I got in time, Irene. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Listen, I ain't gonna beat around a brush with you no more. I want you to stop trying to make my wife into a cat. Are you trying to accuse me of proselytizing? <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, it's Irene means that she's not trying to convert Ma. No one's talking to you there, Big Mouth. Eat it. Come over here. Come over here. <laughs> now, I got one word to say to you, and one word only. You ain't never gonna turn Catholic. That's it. <laughs> oh, gee, you know I would never do that. I just wanted to learn something about Irene's religion. That don't mean I'm gonna join. Well, it certainly looked as if you was. Archie, Edith doesn't have to join our church to find out what religion is all about. She learned a long time ago that, that the important thing in life is to love other people. Irene, that's the best definition of religion I've ever heard. Oh, listen to the atheist over here shooting his mouth <laughs> Why the hell do you know about religion? Arch, I know that the most important thing in life is to love other people. Baloney. I happen to feel that you can achieve that without bringing God into it, but if that's Irene's way, I respect her for it. At least we're going for the same results. The only result I ever seen you going for was the icebox. <laughs> Mike, you may be an atheist, but that was a very Christian thing to say. Thank you, Irene. Oh, well, listen to the Catholic and the atheist agreeing with each other and patting each other on the back. I can't stand it no more. Get away from the audience. <laughs> Good night, kids. Oh, Arima Daichi, Irene. <laughs> Archie, I don't like comparing your church with mine, but there is one big difference that makes me very happy. Uh, what's that? The Protestants have got you. <laughs> Look, Walter, when you first started going to church, out of the blue, six weeks ago, I did not say a word. Now, I think church can be a very uplifting, wonderful, emotional experience for some people. And if you are one of those people, then God love you for it. Go and enjoy it. But, Walter, do not try to drag me along with you. <laughs> Maud, the family that prays together stays together. <laughs> That's beautiful, Walter. <laughs> you know, it constantly amazes me how at any given moment you can reach into your golden bag of wisdom and come up with one clinker after another. <laughs> Lord. And besides, that's not true. My first husband and I prayed together all the time. What for? A divorce. <laughs> What have you got against going to church with me? Oh, uh, Walter, it all goes back to my childhood. I was kicked out of the church choir when I was 12 years old. For what? Singing. <laughs> I see. 
Now, tell me, how was church? Was Mrs. <laughs> Pearson wearing her new mink coat? <laughs> oh, I didn't see her. I bet <laughs> Mrs. Morgan had her hair tinted. I heard she was going to do it. I don't know. <laughs> was old Mr. Dudley there with his new wife? Mm, I didn't notice. Well, a fat lot of good it does you to go to church. <laughs> you see, Walter, that's what church is. The National Enquirer with candles. <laughs> Not to everybody, Maud. A lot of people go to church for very good reasons. Granted, Walter. And what are your very good reasons? Why, at age 52, are you suddenly so interested in religion? Because it makes me feel good. It makes me feel peaceful. It's like... Remember Gary Cooper in the movie Sergeant York? You're reaching into your golden bag again. <laughs> I ask you a question. Remember Gary Cooper as Sergeant York? Yep. <laughs> Are you making fun of me? Nope. <laughs> then you'll listen. Yep. <laughs> Sergeant York, the biggest hero of the First World War, was a real heller. He drank, cursed, fought. And then one day, all of a sudden, in a moment of divine inspiration, he found religion and changed. And that, in a way, is how it happened to me. Well, listen, Sarge, if you're going out to capture 500 Germans, would you bring me back a dozen knockwurst and a loaf of pump in the You know what your problem is? You resent my going to church because it makes you feel guilty. Come on, Walter, I do not feel guilty. Come on, Maud, it's as plain as day. You feel guilty because you know you should be going to church, too. Walter, I do not need an organized religion. I mean, I try to do what God expects of me, Walter. I, I try to do unto others as I would have them do unto me. I, I obey the Ten Commandments. At least nine of them. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? That's for me to know and you to find out. Oh. Can I help it if God invented dreams and Paul Newman? <laughs> no, Walter. Come on, as long as I lead my life the way I think I should, as long as I try to be a decent human being, I see no reason to pray in a building. And honey, if I went to church just to please you, I would feel like a hypocrite. Hey, JJ, you should introduce him to the exhibit. No way. Now, sweet daddy Williams here is one of a kind. Just a few finishing touches, and he's going to be ready for black history. Sure is a shame to keep this in the closet. Hey, since both are just symbols of Jesus, a black family should have a black symbol. If mama sees that there, she's going to kill you. <laughs> Jesus may have your soul, but Mama gonna have your behind. <laughs> you going now, baby. Come on, put that magazine down and get in that kitchen and clean it out. Hi, Mama. How's things down in the laundry room? Well, I had a chat with Princess Grace and Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> The princess was rinsing her husband's shorts, and Liz was waiting for her diamonds to dry. <laughs> now, move out of my way. I got work to do. But, Mom, what about the... Honey, uh, why do you keep jumping up in my face? I know what you look like. Now, move. <laughs> well, I hope the space lab is out of the way, because I am just about to go into orbit. <laughs> I don't have to ask who hung this here, Michael Evans, but before I hang you in its place, why? Mama, it's just a symbol of Jesus. Well, hello, symbol, and goodbye. <laughs> J.J. painted him. Don't finger me, Michael. I had him in the closet. We wasn't performing no miracles for nobody. <laughs> Mama, couldn't we at least let black Jesus hang alongside? Forget it. The only Jesus I know is him, and the one thing he don't need is a partner. <laughs> Mama, how do we know 
Jesus wasn't black. He could have been from the lost tribe of Israel. They were supposed to be black. I bet they were. If ever people were lost, we're it. <laughs> you. This picture has been in my family for as long as I can remember. When I was a baby, I don't know what I saw first. My mama, my papa, or this Jesus. Now, he's the one I know and love, so let's close the subject. Jesus was black. The Bible would have said so. But it does say so. What are you talking about? Uh, I read about it. Um, it's in Revelations chapter 1, verse 14. I read about it in Muhammad Speaks. It says, um, Oh. His hair is like wool, and his eyes are like flame of fire. Well, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> you sure do say that, don't it? And see, Mama, look at her hair, like wool, ain't it? <laughs> and look at them eyes, red like fire. <laughs> yeah, they, they sure is. Junior, how come you decided to paint this? I don't know. All of a sudden, I just had divine thoughts on my mind. <laughs> and for JJ, that's a first. What, having divine thoughts? No, having a mind. <laughs> I guess I ought to be grateful for JJ having Jesus on his mind in any color. Then we can hang him on the wall, Mama? Well, now, I... Please, Mama. All right. But just for Black History Week, after that, he comes down. Good. I'll go get a hook for it. Now, this little quotation fits certain people sitting at this table in the night. Romans 14, 2 dots, 23. <laughs> and he that doubteth is damned if he eats. <laughs> wow. And the text for this evening's service is, let's all pray that our host, Mike Stivett, goes to hell. You said that better than the Bible. <laughs> do you know that hurts me? How do you like that? If I do that to you, will <laughs> Now, here's the other quotation. Oh, oh, Daddy, come on. This is Thanksgiving dinner, not a revival meeting. Well, even so, little girl, my grandchild is laying over there inside of you with his little ears pressed to the walls, Daddy. <laughs> He is going to hear the word of God on Thanksgiving, whether that meathead likes it or not. Well, I don't like it. No, 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 no. You can pull my ear till it falls off. That's it. I've had it. Now, this is my house. It's going to be my child, and no one is going to force his religious beliefs on his family. Oh, sit down your chair and shut up. Yeah, and that's another thing. I've been waiting five years to tell you this. Get out of my chair. <laughs> to sit now. Well, you would sit next to me, your little sweetheart. <laughs> now, there, see? I've never sat and at this end of the table my whole life. Oh, <laughs> <my> <laughs> Stupidest thing i ever seen. A grown man hogging one chair room so. <laughs> Aren't you forcing religion on us tonight? Listen, nobody is forcing religion on you. We're all just calmly trying to talk a little sense into this guy here. Wait, wait a second, wait a second. We? Who, who's we? All of us four God fearers here, except in you. We don't agree that a child should be brought up with no religion. Well, why don't we just take a little vote on that? I say that a parent has the right to raise his child any way he pleases. And if we want to raise our child to believe whatever he wants to believe, that's our business. Now, who's with me on that? Nobody's with you. Everybody's ashamed of you. <laughs> who's with me on that? Let me see some hands. Do I see a hand going up there? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe what I'm Okay. Do whatever you want. 
If you want to raise them in atheist, go ahead. Raise them a Lutheran if you want. Raise them in Norman with seven wives. A holy ruler, a seventh-day adventurer. <laughs> Don't give a damn, because I'm getting the hell out of here. And I'm going out that way. I wouldn't be seen leaving the front door of this den of inquisitory. <laughs> We don't know that. Mike just said they was gonna let him make up his own oh. mind. And whatever he decides, he's still gonna be one of God's children. Uh. Archie, it ain't in our hands. 